you get me in there? Pretty good? Okay. Today is not going to be a typical um, session where I'm just going to keep talking. I want this to be interactive because a lot of you, especially Bob, are experts at networking. So what we want to do is get your opinion about the things that I'm going to be saying as well as I want you to share with the other members some things that will be effective in networking. Here's what I came up with. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to ask questions. One of the, the main networking groups that I enjoy a lot, well not groups, but entities, is meetup.com. A lot of people like social networking, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those. The reason why I like meetup.com so much is because it's um, ge geographically specific. My wife introduced me to meetup.com probably, I'm going to say, seven years ago. And I found it fascinating because at the time I was in Maryland and I said, how am I going to find in Maryland, it's a huge state, a lot of people who are business owners, entrepreneurs, people who are looking to get into business. She said, Randall, go to meetup.com, make yourself a quick profile, and then put in our zip code. And what it's going to do is find all of the groups that meet about business within a radius around the house. I was like, wow, that's cool. How much does that cost? She said, it's free. So you can't beat that. One of the things that people ask, though, is what networking groups did you get involved in? So I got some questions. And I want you guys to, you can write these down and think about it. When you pick a networking group, here's some of the things that you should ask yourself. I'm going to wait for you to get your pen and paper out. But the first thing that I think about is, what is the purpose or the mission of the meetup group? This is huge because some people who have meetup groups, and I'll repeat that again, what is the purpose or mission of the meetup group? Some people who have meetup groups that pay the money to own the meetup site, they don't know why they have a meetup. It's crazy. Because I'll ask them, well, what is the purpose of this group? To get together, to network, okay, outside of that. What does your group represent outside of all of the other networking groups? If you don't have an answer, that's not a motivating reason for people. Like this morning, we're all here at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's some reason why you got up this morning, went through traffic, got here on time to be here. So if you don't have that reason, then your meetup may not be effective. So this is good when looking for meetups to join. Number two, what kind of people belong in this meetup? belong to this meetup. And I'm going to repeat that again. What kind of people belong to this meetup? The interesting thing about meetup.com is that you can put a profile picture on there as well as all of the profile pictures that the person has put in their meetup group are stored unless they erase them. So you can see the transition of when they first started until when they changed, which is interesting. That's something that I look at. But you can also see in Meetup the other groups that that person is associated with unless they block it where they say they don't want you to see the other groups. And you can kind of get a snapshot of who you're dealing with. Why is that important? Well, I would venture to say in the wide world of business, there's only because you're so busy as a business owner, you should be, there's only so many people that you really want to spend time with. Everybody is not worth your time. And I, I hope that doesn't come across, come across harsh, but there's some people who are actually time wasters and time drainers in their day. So if you see, for instance, one of the measures that I like is, I'm gonna pick on Bob because I like him. Bob is a part of certain networking groups. People know that Bob has certain rules for his group. So a person who would belong to Bob's group, Sandy Springs um, Business Connect, I pretty much know that they know rules. They're not just loosey-goosey and may be on time, may not be on time. Guess why? They're not going to belong to Bob's group. So that creates leverage for me, so I don't have to spend a lot of time with people who don't keep their word. Third question is, who are the leaders of this meetup? Who are the leaders of this meetup? This is huge because this meetup was formed where we are right now in Blue Grotto because of a lack of leadership. 
Kim, Bob, me, and Kay were part of a group that said there was a leader, and then there was an assistant leader, but we never saw him. And so when we came in the group, because we were always there, the four of us, people would go, so what do we do? And we're like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy. But I mean, you, and, and you laugh, but there's a lot of groups like this. Because you, you look and you say, okay, well, I'm going to meet this person because I don't know what the deal is. I can ask them when I get there. And then you ask the restaurant, have you seen this person? <laughs> <laughs> no. Then everybody's wandering around like, I don't know what to do. So who is the leader of this meetup? That's important. Okay. It's not Jason. It's not Jason. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. If you want to know who they're talking about, Jason, you should go to uh, YouTube. Check that out. The next question is, how much does it cost to belong to this meetup? How much does it cost to belong to this meetup? This question is huge because free meetups are nice. Free meetups are fine. However, meetups where you have to pay something are usually going to find more serious business on it because if a person, I had this happen to me one time at a meetup group. There was a gentleman who was involved in a profession where he charged a whole lot of money per hour and when it was time for him to buy a breakfast that cost six dollars, he said, I can't believe I'm going to pay six dollars for a breakfast. And I was getting ready to speak and I said, is he kidding? You know, because at, at the same time after he said the six dollars, the next word that he said in his brief presentation is that I'm this guy that's great that's going to help you with your business and your life, and I'm pretty awesome. And I'm like, well, you can't be that much, that awesome if you don't have $6. <laughs> I mean, think about it. I, I, I wouldn't hire you if, you if $6 is killing you. Then when you ask me for money, it's different. It, it's confusing. So look for meetups that cost something because you want to have what they say skin in the game. People who are willing to pay for their business are usually more responsible. Next question is, how does the meetup tell the story of how it got started? Usually you can find this in the about us part of the meetup. How does the meetup tell the story of how it got started? Or you can ask the members, you know, the, the history about where the meetup came from. Next question is, what are the standards or requirements for being a member of this meetup? A meetup that doesn't really have any standards, I don't like being a part of those because that means that anybody can get in. If you're part of something that anybody can get in, it's not going to be good. I like things that are special and unique because then people value them. If everybody can just, you know, become part of it, people kind of treat it that way. Where it's like, oh, well, it's not really that important, it'll be there. So you want to be a part of something special and contribute as a teammate to making it special. Last question is, would you be proud to have your profile picture displayed on this meeting's meetup site? Because other people are looking at it. Would you be proud to have your picture displayed on the meetup site? If the answer is no, you should not join that group. The last thing that I want to share is a story as I close, which talks about the fact that you should coordinate what you're doing with other meetup groups and other networking groups. Okay? When I was in Maryland, my wife and I were involved in fashion production. We did um, fashion shows and things like that. And one of the things that I noticed there since we were part of that culture is there were other people doing fashion shows and related. Well, we happened to be a part of a group where it was, um, I'm going to call it a strip mall. And this strip mall hired us to be a part of their production team. So we had a fashion show that was planned with marketing and all that, where we were probably going to have five to 10,000 people come to this fashion show. It was, a, it was an incredible event, which we didn't make all of those people come, but it was a team effort. Now, unfortunately, there were some people who we were associated with, well, I'm not going to say associated with, people that we knew in business that also were doing fashion shows and those type of things. They weren't paying attention to what was going on in the marketplace, so they arranged to have another fashion show the same day that we're having our huge fashion show. Can anybody tell me what happened to them? Mm -hmm. 
just raise your hand. What, what do you think happened to them? We, we've had our thing planned for months and months. In fact, I think we had the news and all like that, and it's outside, and it's free. So if you're trying to compete with that, what is it that you think happened to them? No one showed up. Exactly. Nobody showed up to their fashion show. All of their hard work and effort was destroyed. So, what does that mean? Coordinate what you're doing with other team members in networking. Look at Meetup, and if there's something, for instance, on Friday, <coughs> which is when we do an event on Friday, you probably wouldn't want to have an event on Friday evening, because guess what's going to happen? People have to choose. That's bad networking etiquette. I'm just going to be honest. Some people won't, don't want to deal with that, but it's bad. It, I would never do it. If, if, there's, if somebody wants to have a meeting on Thursday at 9 o'clock, I would tell them that is bad business because guess what? It's a long-standing history of Bob Zartarian having a meeting that day. But people will still do it and get destroyed. So that's all I have. At this point, what we can do is turn the camera off and I can take questions.